In this video, we want to see how to append or combine different tables using Power Query. And we're going to see three methods. We'll see the manual method where we append tables one by one. We'll see how to use the Excel current workbook function, which is a Power Query M code function, which automatically grabs all the Excel tables in the current workbook. And then we'll see how to use the From Folder feature when the table text files are all as separate files. In order to use Power Query in the Data Ribbon tab and take data from the Excel workbook, you have to have an Excel table. Now, I've already converted all three tables to Excel tables. It's easy. Just click in a single cell and use the keyboard Control-T. Now, for the manual method, you select a single cell, go up to Get and Transform, and we have to use the From Table Range button to bring the table into Power Query before we append. So I click. This opens up the Power Query Editor. That name is fine. The steps it did are fine. We come up to Close and Load, Close and Load 2. And we want to select Only Create a Connection, which means we're loading that data into the Power Query Editor so we can use it in our append. Click OK. We do the same thing for table number 2 from Table. Close and Load, Close and Load 2. Only Create a Connection, click OK. Now we have two tables in. Yes, we want a third one, but we'll see how to add that one later. Now that we have both tables inside of the Power Query Editor, we come up to Get Data, Combine Queries, and there it is. The picture says we're putting one on top of the other using Append. This Append window from the dropdown only shows queries. So we'll select Grade 1 Query. And then the second table, we'll select Grade 2 Query. Then we click OK. Now this is a third query, and we're going to give it a descriptive name, something like Master Table of Grades. Now we click Close and Load, Close and Load 2. And we want to load it now as a table on the existing sheet. Very carefully, I'm going to click on Method 1 and Cell B2. There it is. Click OK. We can see the query over here, but it wasn't polite. I'm going to click on Method 1, and there's our table. Now when we get more tables later, here's Grade Table 3. Select a single cell from Table Range. We'll load it as a connection only. And now we want to edit our query. So we double click to open this. We can see our query name here. On the left, you can always open the Queries pane and see all the different queries we have in this Excel workbook. But we have our current query. We want to go up to, in the Home Ribbon tab, Combine, Queries. And I want to append to the bottom of this one. So I use Append Queries and select the new table, Grade 3, click OK. Now I can just click Close and Load because this has already been loaded. And sure enough, now we have updated this master grade table. Now I'm going to Control S. We'll come back to this one later. But the next example, example two, we're going to use a different workbook. There's the name of this Excel workbook. And we already have our tables. We'll go over to method two. And there's a built-in function called Excel.CurrentWorkbook, which automatically brings in all Excel tables in the current workbook. Now there's a strange twist to this function when we use it. Because after we use it, it's going to load the table onto this sheet method 2 as a new Excel table. So if that function, Excel.CurrentWorkbook, is really programmed to automatically get all Excel tables in the current workbook, it's going to try to get itself and give us double the records when we refresh. But there's an easy fix to that. You just have to remember to do it. Data Ribbon tab, Get Data, Other Sources, and we're going to create a blank query. 
Here's the editor. We definitely want to name this query. Now I named this Master Grade Table ECW for Excel.CurrentWorkbook. And that's the name of this query that we haven't created yet. But guess what? When we load this as a table, that's also going to be the name of the Excel table. So I'm going to use this again, highlight, copy, and enter. Now there's a source step here, but there's no code. And that's because we get to write a formula in Power Query. This is the official M code language. We type an equal sign, and we can type the name of the function. And I see it right there, Excel.CurrentWorkbook tab. This is an argumentless function, so I can simply open and close parentheses. And it's just programmed to always go and get all the Excel tables and other objects like define names, print areas, and things like that. So when we use this function, we want to make sure that we only have Excel tables in our workbook. And we do. When I hit Enter, it went and got a column with the actual tables, which is different than Excel. Excel, we can't have a whole table in a cell like we can in Power Query. And that's the name of the table. And this is where we're going to create a filter to block this exported table from ever becoming part of the table. We click the Filter drop-down, Text Filters, Does Not Equal, and then we Paste. Now, you have to remember to do this step here, even though it seems strange that they would program it that way. But that's how we get the benefits of the Excel.CurrentWorkbook function, because it's quite easy. Now I'm going to click OK. It doesn't do anything because we haven't loaded it yet. Now guess what? We don't need this column because we only want the tables to append one on top of each other. So watch this. We have used that step to filter. But when we come up to the top of the column and right click Remove, it adds a step here. But the filtered rows step is still there and will always be part of this query. Now we've removed the rows. And now we want to click this double to the side arrow here to combine. I don't want to use the original column name here as a prefix to these names. I just want these names. So now I click OK. And there's the append with all our Excel tables that we have currently or in the future, except for the query output. Now in Power Query, if we're going to use this in a pivot table or something like this, this actually has to be a number. And you'll see at the top that the data type icon, it says ABC123. That means I don't know what data type this is. In Power Query, we have to give columns data types. We're going to give this a data type of decimal number. We'll give this a data type of text. And now we can close and load, close and load too. As a table on the existing worksheet, B3, click OK. Now notice there's this little ghost row right here. That's because it thinks it's still looking at our itself. But if we click Refresh, it'll go away. Because we very carefully took that query name and said, hey, filter, filter out that table name. Now you can try. Adding a new table, converting it to a table, and refreshing, and you'll see that it works perfectly. Now that's method number two. Now method number three is called the From Folder option for appending tables. And you use this option when you have files that contain tables. Now we have text files, either .csv, comma separated values, or text files, .txt. That's a tab delimited file. So if it's the case that we have a bunch of files and we need to append them, that's when we use this method. Now when you download this folder right here, it'll be zipped. When you unzip it, it'll have the Start folder. That's where we're going to tell Power Query to go and get all the files. And then there's an extra file on the outside that we'll use later. Now very importantly, when we look in our Start folder, we're going to assume that we only have .csv files. If we had other types of files in here, there's an easy enough way to deal with that in Power Query. But it's more complicated than what we're going to see. And it's a safe assumption. All we're going to put in here is .csv. In this file right here on the sheet Method 3, 
we'll go up to Get Data, From File, From Folder. We need to give it the folder path. Click Browse. Wherever you have downloaded it, there's the Start Folder. Click Open. That's the folder path. Now if you move that folder, then we have to edit this later, which is easy enough to do. Click OK. There's a preview of the two files, and we're going to use the Combine button. When I click the drop down, Combine and Load would just automatically do it to the worksheet. Combine and Load 2 would give us the option. But usually we want to click Combine and Transform Data so we can look inside the Power Query Editor to see if everything's OK. So I'm going to select that option. It wants to know what the delimiter is. We have comma delimited data. Click OK. Now we want to name this query. So I gave it a good name. The From folder created a bunch of steps and a bunch of queries over here. I'm going to close the query window. One thing we don't want, which the automatic process did, was it took the name of the file. So Change data type is the last step. I want to add a step, so I right click, remove. And there's the appended table with data types and everything. Close and load, close and load to. Table on the existing sheet, click OK. And that's pretty amazing because now that query right there and that table are all looking in that folder. So if we add tables or delete tables later, Everything will update. Let's go test it. Grade 3, I'm going to copy. And inside of Start, I'm going to Control V. Now I can right click, Refresh. Now if that folder path changes, you can edit the query, double click. And there it is, the source step. Click the gear icon, and you can edit it there. Otherwise, a probably easier way is Get Data, Data Source Settings, Select the source and use the Change Source button. All right, so we saw three ways to append. You use Get Data from File from Folder when the files are coming externally into Excel. We can use the Excel.CurrentWorkbook function if all the Excel tables are in the current workbook. Just remember, filter that name out like we did in this step right here. And then we started with the manual method of using From Table and then get data, combine, append. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And be sure and check out the two other append videos I just did, one with index, let, and lambda, and one with filter XML function.